How do you build resilient applications and systems? I'm Derek Kilmartin from CodeOpinion.com, and I'm gonna give you five tips at things you should look at or to implement to keep your applications and systems running correctly and consistently. Thanks to Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. Let's get right into it. The first tip is having a fallback. In any type of system, you're likely gonna need to leverage third-party services, likely synchronously. This means that you have some client requests, reach your API, let's say it's just an HTTP API that you're developing, and you need to reach out to some third-party service. This could be anything, a payment gateway. Could be as simple as something as like a link shortener. Whatever the case may be, if you're reaching out to it synchronously and you're expecting it to, in the happy path, return your result, what happens when it's unavailable? You still wanna provide your client that an original request with a successful result. In order to do that, you have to have a fallback. You have to have something where if that primary third-party service is unavailable, that we can then reach out to that fallback to perform the same type of action that we can ultimately get to the same type of outcome. Unfortunately, you can't have the expectation that any third-party service that you're using is gonna be reliable. You really just have to have a fallback, something that you can go to if that primary service is unavailable or just not returning you the results you're expecting. This also plays into having the circuit breaker pattern used, which is still the same idea of really you need a fallback. So if the primary is down, you don't have to keep falling back for every request. You could circuit break, hit the fallback for a period of time, and then try again to the primary. But again, this really goes back to having fallbacks. So tip number two is having a timeout, and generally a quick timeout. You'll notice a thread between these tips is that when we have a client make a request to our system, our HTTP API, and we need to make some synchronous request to some third-party service, let's say it's an HTTP request, if that normally takes 500 milliseconds, and that's totally fine, well, what happens if it actually takes all of a sudden out of nowhere, 30 seconds? What happens to our system when that third-party service has degraded performance and all of a sudden we went from 500 milliseconds to 30 seconds? We wanna have timeouts. We don't wanna wait 30 seconds. So for the example, how this relates to the first one is that we can implement and use that fallback. If we have a timeout that says, if anything exceeds 500 milliseconds, to cancel that request, have some type of timeout exception, and then we can go hit that fallback. So that's how these relate to each other. You have to have some expectation of how long these requests are gonna take. So it's not just the availability of these third-party services that you're using that can cause you issues. It's also just the reliability, their performance, and your expectations. So understanding that you need to have timeouts that are relative of what your expectations are for a request. Have timeouts. So the next tip is using queues in moving work asynchronously because it gives you more options to deal with failures. So as the example, we have our client making a request to our HTTP API, and let's say our external service that we need to hit synchronously is a payment gateway. And we really don't have any option for a fallback. We just, that's the one we have to use. But if there's a failure, again, we still wanna be able to process that request. This means in a lot of circumstances, you can actually move that work asynchronously. If you think of, for the example of placing an order, you don't place the order, persist that to your database, and hit your payment gateway all at the same time that's broken up work. So that means that when our client places that order, we could then send a message to a queue that we could then asynchronously do it separately. So we could tell the client, okay, thanks for your order. Everything's good there. Here's your order number. But then separately, we can process asynchronously that work to hit our payment gateway to charge the credit card. But as I mentioned with failures, this has some benefits. So when our client makes that request, it still placed the order. They still got their confirmation number or whatever the case may be, but we are still placing that message on our queue to process that payment. When we do that, if there is a failure, we have options. We could have built-in retries, but we could also just leverage a dead letter queue and move that message to our dead letter queue so we could deal with that message later, reprocess it from the dead letter queue, but to the client, everything was fulfilled successfully. Using queues and moving work asynchronously just give you different options with handling failures, as well as when you have increased load for something like my example of placing orders, you can handle that influx of traffic. This leads us to our next tip, tip number four, is capacity and understanding and being able to scale. So that means if we're using the example of our queue, we have some messages going to our queue, and if at any given time, we have more messages being 
uh, produced than consumed, we're gonna have an issue. So that means that we can just scale out. We can add more consumers. This is the competing consumers pattern. This allows us to process more messages concurrently. It allows us to be able to handle that influx of load, especially over time if we're, again, consistently producing more messages than we're consuming. The problem with this is that you can kind of move the bottleneck a little bit and you need to be aware of it. So that if we're producing these messages and now we're adding more and more consumers, we need to be able to understand what our downstream services are and how they're affected. If we had some type of database that was being used when these messages are consumed, well, now we're increasing load on it and then that can cause some issues to our database. But understanding what the capacity is of your system and all the infrastructure. Being able to handle that influx of traffic, understanding what your capacity is in your given system, whether it's queues or just your HTTP API, how many requests can you handle? This goes back all the way to the start of what's the happy path of the external services that you're using? What's the short timeout that you need to have on that to make everything running smoothly? But this leads us to the final tip, which is how do you understand all this? How do you know what the timeout should be? How do you know what your capacity is for your queues and what you can handle? You need metrics. Having metrics for monitoring and alarming, but not just alarming when things got really far, it's being able to be proactive so you can adjust your system before something goes really wrong. So when we're talking about our queue as the example, it's having metrics on the inflow rate, the outflow rate, so we're knowing how our, what our capacity is. It's other things like queue length, throughput, processing time. But it's not just about queues, it's just anything outbound, like I was mentioning about making those external HTTP calls, having metrics on those requests to those services. What's the request time? What's the latency on that? What's the latency on any given route or endpoint that we have in our system? So we can know what things are when they're performing normally, and then we can see when things start going offside. We gotta have metrics on any part of your system so you know when something not has gone wrong, but is about to go wrong so you can get it before it even happens. You wanna be proactive. Hopefully these five tips give you some insight about how you can build a system that runs correctly consistently. It's about thinking about failures and how you wanna deal with them. Whether that be fallbacks, or again, it may not just be because something's unavailable, it may not be performing as you're expecting, and you have short timeouts to deal with that. It's moving work asynchronous and thinking about cues because you have different options in dealing with those failures. It's about understanding the capacity of your system and how you can change it to deal with that influx of traffic or that influx of capacity. And to do all this, you need metrics. If you enjoy topics like this and you want to chat with other software developers about software architecture and design, you can get access to my private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.